Good morning, everyone. So glad that you're here to join us this morning. Hope everybody had a great week. I'm going to tell you straight up, I had an awesome week. I, I really did. Um, bad things happen the week before, but I'll tell you what, when one door closes, another one opens, and praise God for that. If you would stand in praise and worship with us this morning.
Every low, 
Streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever felt comes like a flood, comes full. The cross at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red, my sin washed white. I owe all to you. I owe all to you. with God and forgiveness and all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross
God speaking to our hearts. <clears throat> the Bible is very clear about the gifts of the Spirit and, and God having a love for us as people. This morning, God, God has a message for maybe one person, maybe every person in this room. Um, I encourage you, if, if that spoke to your heart, that you respond this morning to the Lord, that you praise Him that you, you spend time hearing his voice. The altars are open. You kneel at the altar. Allow God to, to just love on you this morning. He sees our pain. He sees our tears. He sees our joys too. He is completely, radically in love with each one of us this morning. And not just today, but every day. Will today be the day that we say, yes, God. I want to be radically in love with you today. If that's you this morning, I just encourage you that you praise the Lord, even right where you're at. Just praise the Lord for how good he is. Amen. God, you are good. You are good. You are good. You you love us. You have nothing but good for our hearts, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're radically in love with me, that you're radically in love with each one of us, and that you want to have relationship with us. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. You are so good, God. We thank you for Jesus at the cross. We thank you for what he did at the cross for us, that we can have relationship. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you in this moment. We need you in the next moment. God, help us. Give us revelation, Lord. Give, reveal to us what relationship looks like with you. We thank you.
that one more time. I want you to sing this in your heart this morning. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to worship you this morning, to praise your name. God, we thank you that you're with us this morning. I pray that as we continue to seek you for the rest of this service this morning, God, that our hearts would be softened. We'd be able to hear what you're speaking to us and that our lives would be changed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you take a moment uh, and just say hello to your neighbor, uh, hello to somebody that sits across from you maybe. God bless you. Well, hey, good morning. So glad you're here. Uh, man, I'm already getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, what a what a great what a great week. I don't know what your week was look look like, but I do know this. I was like, after Sunday, man, to see people making making decisions to dedicate their kids to, to raising their kids in the eyes of the Lord, and then people making decisions to be baptized, that, I, man, there's those mountain peaks, and that was one of those for me. Marriage was one of those. Baptisms was one of those. Um, yeah, obviously salvation with God was, you know, with Jesus. That's one of those mountain peaks. But, man, you know, that just set the tone for the week, and I encourage you. As you leave here today, hmm, meditate on what God has spoken to you today. Whether that's in your own heart, whether that's something that you heard that, that I say, whether that's something that was spoken to you during worship, meditate on that and allow that to set the tone for your week. Amen? Well, hey, uh, got some things coming up. Always challenges, uh, you know, scheduling, weather, uh, fun stuff. But, hey, this Saturday... This Saturday, if you could come out, I know this has been announced weirdly a few times and, and by my poor direction, but whether you're a guy or whether you're a woman, we need you this Saturday uh, at 9 a.m. We'll, we'll get to work. We got some jobs for some dudes. We got some jobs for the ladies that will probably keep us in check anyhow. Uh, if you could come out, we'll have refreshments in the morning, coffee and donuts, uh, and then later on we'll, we'll mow down on some Main Street pizza. That always seems to be a winner. So, yeah, if you could come out this Saturday at 9 a.m., uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, in your bulletin, again, read your bulletin as much as you can. Um, everything seems to be in here. Shekinah does an amazing job of making sure events get put in here. So, uh, we're going to do three nights of revival in October, uh, October 11th through the 13th. That's a Sunday night, a Monday night, and a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We have a, 
I have a friend of mine that I know that I know he's got a calling on his life and an anointing on his life. And I, I encourage you, bring out folks that need healing. I encourage you to bring out folks that are depressed. Um, because I believe that God's going to set some folks free during this time. God can do it any time he wants, but I believe God has set a special time that people are going to be set free. So each night at 7 o'clock, we're going to meet here, we're going to worship the Lord, and, and we're going to watch God work, and we're going to experience God's love. Amen? Again, put that on your calendars, October 11th, 12th, and 13th at, at 7 o'clock. And bring your friends, bring some folks that need Jesus. Um, okay, and last, last but not least, this is probably my, my favorite my favorite announcement in here. Um, we're going to have a volunteer appreciation banquet right after service on October 25th. Here's the good news. It's not a potluck. I know we love our potlucks. But I don't want any of the volunteers to have to do anything. I want to appreciate all y'all. I'm down south now. We're going to cater in some food. It's going to be some good food. I promise you. We're going to have a good time. We're going to enjoy each other. Whether you've volunteered or not, I encourage you to come out uh, and not miss this opportunity to honor folks. I promise you, when you honor people, you will be honored. You will be renewed. You will be refreshed. And I, I encourage you, please, October 25th, right after service, we're going to go right next door. So we have indoor meetings. So there's, there's heat in there. It's going to be an enjoyable time. There's going to be awesome food, and there's going to be awesome people. Amen? October 25th. Yeah, we've got to keep announcing that. Uh, October 25th. All right. If the ushers would come, we're going to continue our worship this morning with our tithes and offerings. Again, we, we tithe because God commands that of us of us and we want to be obedient and we also offer out of obedience too as God calls us to give uh, you know there's different missions that we support I, I encourage you to give to missions um, you know we support Joram in Africa and and been putting up buildings there we've been feeding those folks uh, we support all kinds of missionaries from Teen Challenge to Chi Alpha to, to missionaries in Poland I encourage you to allow God to speak to your heart and if you want to know about the missionaries that we support, please contact me. I'd love to tell you about that, about them and what they're doing and, and the work that they're doing. And there's a lot of detailed work there. Uh, contact me. Uh, get to know these things. Um, because I tell you, as we get understanding God, we're able to understand why God's calling us to something. Why God's asking me to give to Chi Alpha. Or why God's asking me to give to Poland or Africa. Um, but I encourage you. Man, we are a missions church. We support missions here. So I encourage you to allow God to speak into your life there. Amen. Let me pray. Dear God, I thank you that you give us resources. I thank you that you take care of us. I thank you for the jobs you've given us, Lord. Um, I thank you for all the provisions you've made us. And it is such an honor that we are able to, to give to your mission, Lord. And I pray over these tithes and offerings this morning that they would be blessed, multiplied, and anointed, and lives would be changed because of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Also, yeah, and I also pray, Lord, bless the giver this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. I'll give the ushers a couple of moments. Joy and Rachel are going to come. Uh, today's an exciting day. I, I'm not going to take too much of their thunder this morning. Uh, they're going to tell you they have some uh, exciting news from the children's church. So if you fine ladies would come, I'd, awesome. Good morning. I'm Joy, and this is Rachel, and we have the privilege of partnering together to teach the Parkside Kids class um, here at, at church. And Parkside Kids is for children who are in grades kindergarten through fifth grade. Parkside also has the Sprouts class, which is for infant through preschool and youth group for those who are in sixth grade through 12th grade. And each fall, we like to promote kids who are moving on to the next class. And this year, we have two kids who are moving from Parkside Kids into Parkside Youth, and that is Callie and Trigg. Um, Callie couldn't be here this morning, but Trigg's here. And so we just like um, to acknowledge these students, and we like to bless them with a little gift and pray over them. 
And um, me and Rachel, we like to brag on him a little bit and like to tell him how much we're going to miss him because we really get, um, oh, this is a bittersweet moment for us because we have grown to love these kids and watch them grow in their relationship with Jesus. It was so exciting to see Trig get baptized last week. Oh, that was awesome. And so now, though, we have to let go and let them go on to Missy and Steve in the youth group. And we're, we know that they're going to be an amazing um, influence on their lives and help them continue in their journey with Jesus. So I'm going to turn over to Rachel, and she's going to say a little bit about Trig and um, what we're presenting him with today. Yeah, this is usually a beginning of the school year thing, but we kept our clutches on a little tighter this year. <laughs> um, so um, I'll start with... I'll start with Callie. Um, Callie, she would be here standing a little bit taller than me. Um, she started her Parkside Kids Ministry here as a Sprout, and um, she has. Hold on. <laughs> um, so she has grown and developed so much, and she has a servant's heart, and she is um, such a caring person. Um, she has expressed a desire to lead. Um, as soon as possible, really. She is. <laughs> she's ready. Um, she thinks she's ready. <laughs> um, and Trig. Trig is a gentleman. He, um, he, he provides very thoughtful answers and participates well in class. Um, he, is, um, he is just always so kind um, and so respectful to others. So it's been, it's been great to see how much they've grown. Um, I wanted to add, too, because I was thinking about, um, you know, Trig this morning, of course, Trig and Kelly this morning, and I so I don't remember if I've ever had to remind Trig of any single rule that he needed to work on following. He just has always just been so respectful and polite. So um, in this bag um, is a survival kit of sorts. Um, don't take it out to the wilderness. You won't, that won't help you at all. <laughs> um, but this will, help, um, this will help you survive youth group. Um, it will help you transition into youth group. <laughs> um, so it's, it has many items that are intended for you to be able to share in different ways. There are snacks for you to share with others. There is silly string for you to share in the fun. There is um, at scheduled times. Okay. So um, there is... Um, there are some hygiene items for you to share space. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a journal, some journaling items for you to share your thoughts. And a semi-tubular can of stacked potato chips for you to share the gospel. Because as for youth group, you begin to um, transition to Speed the Light Ministries over BGMC. Okay, so we support that, we support that, but, um, <laughs> but that is typically collected in a cylindrical container of um, potato chips. So, um, okay, so um, Trig, would you like to come up and accept your youth group survival, group survival <laughs> um, And so, um, we'll invite Steve and Missy, and Pastor up for some prayer for Trig and Kelly as they move on to this next step. Would you, uh, would you all just extend your hands, and, and we're going to pray for Trig and Kelly. I know Kelly's not here, but we want to pray for her as well. Um, and would you just agree with us in prayer as we pray? Dear God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this fine young gentleman, Trig, Lord. And I, I pray, Lord, I pray your blessing, your anointing over him. I pray that as he makes this transition, Lord, you speak to him who he is, Lord who you've called him to be, who you created him to be, Lord. God, I pray that as he enters into the youth group, the gifts, the knowledge, the understanding, the experiences he has will be a blessing to those, to those other kids in the youth group, Lord. I pray that for Callie as well, that this fine young woman, I pray for her, Lord. God, I pray that you give her confidence in who she is, who you created her to be. God, I pray that, that you, you begin to... Help her let those gifts out of her, Lord, to, to be a blessing, not only to the youth group, Lord, but all those people around her. Same for Trig, Lord. I pray that, that the, the, the things that you've blessed him with, the gifts, 
that you would begin to develop those and you give each of these kids, Callie and Trig, revelation into, into why you've, mm -hmm. you've developed these gifts in their lives, Lord. Jesus, shut up a hold of a shikra of a heart of a hold of a shikra of a tie. Shut up a hold of a shikra of a tie. God, I pray for Steve and Missy, Lord, uh, that are receiving these two fine, fine young people, Lord. God, I pray that you give them wisdom, that you give them anointing, that you give them the knowledge to steward these lives as they sit uh, underneath their ministry, Lord, and as they grow. We thank you for that, Lord. I, I pray that you bless the children's ministry, Joy and Rachel and everybody that works there, Lord. God, as this is a bittersweet moment, but I pray encouragement over them. God, I pray that, that uh, their ministry is increased as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you, ladies. Uh, fine, fine job. We, man, yeah, we have some fine ministries here. Uh, if you, man, get plugged in. If you're not plugged in, please, there's, there's opportunity to get plugged in. We uh, have plenty of opportunities for folks to get connected. I believe this, and this is probably where I leave this. I believe this, that as we connect, as we become part of this family, as we serve one another, that spiritual growth begins to happen in us, um, that our walk with Jesus becomes stronger. So I encourage you. Um, also, uh, one last quick announcement that kind of ties in. I've uh, A couple weeks ago, Bob, back in August, I was out because I had to be at a wedding, and I was stressed. I was like, man, I want this to go smooth for him, for everybody. And I was kind of freaking out. I even called Chad the morning of. I was like, hey. I want you to know the wedding's not till four, so if you need me, please call. Uh, you know, but I was kind of stressing out. I'm like, man, I don't know, are all the people going to be there? And I'm trying to call people and connect with people. And, and I, want to, I want to let you know, over the next few weeks, I'm, I'm testing out a new, a new program that, that helps me schedule folks. That it'll send you an email or a text. And in that, you can accept or deny if you serve in one of the ministries here, whether that's kids, church, nursery, ushers, greeters, um, audio, video, the worship team, uh, I promise you, if you have a desire to serve, there's a place for you here. I promise you that. Um, so, But this gives me a way that when you accept or deny, I say, hey, okay, that person can't do it. And it doesn't matter the reason. I don't care. But then that gives me the knowledge to be able to find a replacement and and not have to scramble Sunday morning. Because that's uh, chaos is not God's design. Right. God, our God is a God of order. So amen? So if you see some weird text messages or emails from this thing called Breeze, um, hey, it's not spam, I promise you that. Um, it's just us trying to, to steward our ministries better. Amen. Well, hey, um, again, children, child dedications and baptisms last week, if you missed it, I'm sorry, because it was an awesome time. Uh, it was an awesome time of fellowship. The water was somehow not that cold. Uh, yeah, but I think about the, the child dedications and the, and the baptisms are like this culmination of what God's already been doing. And, and for some folks, they're going to think of a bobblehead or a robot here in a second. But God has been on the move here at Parkside. God is on the move. It's Chad and Missy, if you want to know the reference there. Uh, we were laughing about that this morning. But God has been on the move here at Parkside. Over the last, you know, I, I started to notice it when we were going through the Disciple Series. We've since launched into this refreshed and rekindled series. Um, but during that, as we were talking about the qualities and the attributes and the characteristics of what a disciple is, I started to notice that God was moving. Different conversations I was having with folks. Um, different things happening. Like we, man... Prophetic dreams, speaking in tongues, healing. Lady was healed. She had a tumor in her breast. It's gone, 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 gone. Prayed for, went to the doctor. Because they were going to come up with a plan, you know, whether it be chemo or whatever it is. Goes back to the doctor. They do, the, they do whatever test that is that they do, and it's gone. That's God moving. 
And it's not, it's not because that person's special, the person that spoke in tongues. It's not that they're any more special than you or I, the person that's healed, the person that's having prophetic dreams. None of us are, are any more special to God. We're all, God loves us all radically. And he moves in our lives so that we can be a testimony to others so they might receive the love that he has for them. But again, I've noticed these things, conversations, people just excited about what God's doing. It might not be a healing. It might not be a miracle. But they're excited about what God's doing in their life. That's spiritual growth. That means that, th that their relationship with Jesus is getting deeper. Their relationship with Jesus is getting stronger. Their walk step and step and step with Jesus. I'm going to get out of the camera angle up there. But uh, is, is, is more in, in tune, more in sync with each other, right? And that's God working in our lives. So I, man... Why, why, you know, I, and then I get this phone call from this friend of mine that, and he's been a blessing in my life. And that's why we're going to do Encounter 2020. That's what we called it, Encounter 2020, three nights of revival, come and experience God's love. I accepted that. That's a risk for me. Uh, man, what if he says something crazy? Who's going to get blamed? He's going to be gone. Three days, he's out. Uh, that's scary for me, right? I trust him. I know him. Uh, but we're all human, right? So I'm excited. But that's all these things happen when we experience spiritual growth. I kid you not. I, I, you look back at any revival that the church has had in its history since Acts chapter 2. Those things happen. The disciples, what? They were in that upper room, right, in Acts, being obedient to God. That obedience, when we're obedient to God, that's spiritual growth in our lives. And in one day, 3,000 people were added to their number, gave their lives to Christ. Um, so for us, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what God's doing and there's spiritual growth happening. Um, and I encourage you, be excited. And here's what happens when, when we experience spiritual growth in our life. We have this encounter, right, with Jesus. We, and it's, it's maybe, maybe it's just a singletary encounter at the beginning, but soon it becomes more, more frequent. And almost to a point where, and when you're walking with Jesus, you can have experience with Jesus every day. I don't know if you knew that. But you can experience and encounter Jesus every single day. It's not just a Sunday thing. He doesn't just show up for one day of work like the pastor does, right, a week. No, he's on, he's on the clock 24-7 because he loves us. And it's not work to him. It's passion and love. But when we, when we start to experience, when a group of believers experience spiritual growth, people encounter Jesus that need to encounter Jesus. When you and I grow spiritually other folks that need to know Jesus encounter him. We start living out our faith in the culture we live in, in the world that we live in. And that culture, that society, that world that we live in, when we start living that faith out, begins to change. Begins to change for the better. Um... If you would, turn to John chapter 4. I took you to a well last week, and we're going to hang out at that same well today. Uh, we, if you weren't here last week, I'd like to recap for just a quick moment. Um, we journeyed to this well in, in John chapter 4. And you're, if you've got titles in your Bible, that's going to say something like the Samaritan woman. Um, something like that. Jesus and the Samaritan woman. So you're at John chapter 4, right? And... Uh, since you're there, as you're churning there, um, I want to look at some things this morning about this. About, and last, last week we talked about being refreshed. And we talked about the, the woman at the well, right? She comes to the well, and it, the Bible tells us in John 4 that it was noon when Jesus encountered her at the well. And we talked about why that, that was so significant, that, that the Bible said it was noon. Because if you lived in the Middle East, noon is probably the hottest part of the day. 
and to go to the well and draw water out. I mean, it's not like a, a little spigot that we turn on today. Like, you have a deep well that's dug very deep. The water's down there. It's a long ways down there. And you have to have a rope and a bucket, and you have to pull this thing out. It's hot. Why in the world would this woman go to a well at noon on the hottest part of the day? She was Samaritan. One, she was looked down upon the Jews. Samaritans, whether you were a guy or a girl, you were, you were despised. You were basically, essentially, a half-breed. Um, Two, she was probably ridiculed. We find out later at this meeting at the well with Jesus and her that she was not married once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times. And the dude she was living with wasn't in any one of those five. Can you imagine that for a moment in the society that we live in today? What that looks like, the shame a woman that would probably feel if people knew that about her. Could you imagine a woman coming into our congregation? that had that kind of a testimony and what she might feel. Can you imagine the women that don't come into a congregation? They don't come to church because of the the fear of the ridicule that they might if they were exposed. I don't want to pick on women and being married, though, either. We all have a testimony, right? We all have this testimony in us that that if, if we were exposed, oh, man. If they knew that about me, I encourage you, share your testimony as much as you can so you don't have to live under the condemnation of of past life experiences. Share your testimony of what God's done in your life, where he's taken you from and to. But here this woman is, right? It's, It's noon. It's hot. She's there because nobody else is there. Nobody else is gonna be there. It's too hot. And then Jesus comes, shows up. And then she finds out that he's Jewish, and she's like, I can't even believe you're talking to me. It just blows her mind. And then he he asks for a drink, and she goes, but you don't even have a bucket or a rope. How do you expect me to give you a drink, right? And he offers her this drink. She takes a drink, and she's refreshed. And we're going to pick up probably from there. You're in John 4. Um, I want to talk. In in the first few verses, we we learn this in John 4, 1. It says, um, So we'll start John 4, 4. It says, Jesus had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily um, beside the well about noontime. I think I skipped a verse. Yeah, I should have started in one. I should have started where I was. Jesus 4.1. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, he, his disciples did. So he left Judea, returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at that time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. I want to stop there just for a moment. That's not even the main part of the scripture this morning. I want to stop there. This is an interesting detail that we find out. The 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 disciples had left to go buy food in the village. Jesus is at the well by himself. Now imagine, before this moment at noon, they're traveling, right? He had left, he's going, going through Samaria, he comes to this village of Sychar. Can you imagine if you're a disciple in that moment, and Jesus is talking about, you're having a conversation, right? Jesus is talking about doing ministry in this place. Think about this, he's on a journey, they're walking, they're, they're journeying, and it's different than today. Like sometimes we miss having conversations because we get in our car, I go 75 miles an hour down the freeway and I get somewhere in 10 minutes. And I miss what God's speaking to me in that moment sometimes. He's, I'm just focused on a destination. But Jesus is doing life with these folks. There's not the distractions of going 75 miles an hour and I hope I don't hit somebody else or somebody hits me. They're walking and they're talking and they're coming into Samaria and all the dis- most of the disciples came from a Jewish background. And they know we're going into a place, these people, we don't like these people. We do not like these people. They are trying, they're they're half Jewish, they're half not. 
they don't really deserve, they don't live under God's laws. They don't live under the strict teaching that we live under. They don't really deserve the benefits. And they have the well that Jacob, J, they have Jacob's well. Now think about that for a minute. Your whole history as a Jewish person is wrapped all the way back into your ancestors. And that everything that you know about God at this point in your life is from your ancestors. Everything, everything, every blessing, every way that you can get sin erased from your life at this point in your life comes from your ancestors. And here these people are, they're just kind of like, hey, this other Hebrew person, Jewish person married somebody they shouldn't have married. And here you are, you're taking part of a blessing that was really meant for us because that's what they believed. We are God's chosen people. We are God's special people. And God is for us. We're not sure about everybody else. So we despise these people. Jesus, what are you thinking? He's like, look, we're going. Hey, fine. We need food. You do your thing up there at Jacob's well. We're going to go buy food. I think about that, that they're already doubting what God's about to do, just based on a little foreknowledge of the geographical location that they had journeyed into. So this morning we're coming back to this well. I talked about last week about being refreshed. And I said that, that you needed to deal with three things. If you wanted to be refreshed by Jesus, if you wanted to take the drink, the cup that he was offering you, right? I talked about that coffee, right? That I drank coffee on a bike ride and I was hoping that it was going to refresh me. This is a week old water. I hope it refreshes me still. Um, <laughs> it's last week's water. Um, but, you know, I, I realized very quickly on this 20 mile ride, that that coffee was not going to refresh me. And I quickly changed my game plan. I started drinking water. So I said, in order to receive this cup, and what, what's God's drink that he's offering, right? It's his love. Jesus is essentially offering this woman his love, saying, if you will drink of this, all that shame, all that ridicule, all of that, that goes away. I don't have a problem sharing with people who I used to be. I don't have a problem with that at all because I'm not that person anymore. I took a drink and I became a new creation. Right? That's gone. But he's saying, if you just take the drink, that all goes away. You can walk in the life that I created you to walk in. All you got to do is accept it, right? So I, we talked, the three things you need to deal with is first you had to choose it. It's the first thing. You have to choose if you're going to accept this or not. Or you can keep drinking that coffee and, and just keep being beat up and, and feeling like you don't have any energy and not being able to accomplish your goals. You can do that. But you have to choose. You can choose either or. It's up to you. God doesn't force it on us. Then I said the second thing that you need to deal with, once you take this drink... I'm really thirsty this morning. Um, why don't you take the drink, put it down. Otherwise, I'll just keep drinking. Um, Jesus is going to ask something of you. And the third thing, and you have to deal with that. Are you going to, are you going to answer what he asks of you? For some of us, we've got to get rid of friends. For some of us, man, uh, I have to get rid of things I, I like, you know, maybe... Football used to be a thing for me. Man, I was, I remember at Teen Challenge, nobody watched anything but football on a Sunday when we got back. That was it. That's what we watched. And God dealt with me on that one day. He said, Ryan, that's got to go. You've, you've made a God out of that almost. That's more important to, than the folks that I love to you right now. So, whoa. So God's going to ask something. You accept Jesus into your life, he's going to ask something of you. He asks you to surrender to him. And you're going to have to decide, are you going to answer the call? And the last thing is that you have to be honest with Jesus. There's this temptation in each one of us that we want to hide stuff. That somehow, I know God knows, but I'm not going to admit it, because if I admit it, then i got to change it. 
So we come to a place that we have to deal with. Am I going to admit it today so I can walk in the freedom God's offering me? Each one of us has to deal with that. Me, you, everybody. We all have to respond to these things that we have to deal with. I've got to choose it. I've got to answer whether I'm going to, of what Jesus is asking me of, and then I have to be honest with him. So John 4, 27 through 42, we're going to pick up the rest of the story at the well here. It says just then in verse 27, just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek, or why are you talking with her? They knew better than that. So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, this is where it gets, this is the twist. If you're reading your Bible, if you're at home reading your Bible, there's some times that you're just reading it, and this is a 2,000-year-old document, and you're just kind of reading it, and it's like, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, here's this woman that's ridiculed, right? She is completely ridiculed, despised. There's one Jewish person at the well. Now all of a sudden there's ten more. Like one Jewish person's easy to deal with. And in my mind, wow, I can't believe this. Like she's just, it didn't say she ran away from the well. That would have made sense. It didn't say that she ran away and then never came back. That would have made sense. But there's a twist here. There's a twist that happens. What does she do? She went away to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And they went out of the town and were coming to him. And then now we get another picture of the story. So you got to kind of pause there and you say, Okay, this lady just left. She had encountered Christ. She took the drink of water. You have to assume that. Because now her, her story is starting to change, right? So she goes. And then the story changes, and the disciples start to talk to Jesus. They said, hey, it says in verse 31, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him to eat. They're saying, hey, you sent us to the town. We got the food. You got it, Rabbi. You got to eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? They're wondering, like, what's he talking about? Did he have some food stashed? Did somebody bring him food? Uh, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that, that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you've entered into their labor. Many Samaritans, so here he is, right? He's talking about, they're talking about food. And he's like, look, I got food. And it's different from what you have. And I'm being nourished, right? I'm being nourished. And now he starts to give them a picture. They, they, their issue is they need to eat. That's their problem that they're faced with right now. They're hungry, so... In order to get us to eat, I need to make you say that you're hungry. Then we can do this because you're our rabbi. You're our teacher, right? So, Jesus, you got to eat, man. He's like, no, no. I already got food. And they're like, man, somebody bring us something to eat. Now we're going to have to wait because we know Jesus. We've been walking with him for a little while. We're, he's on a mission. He's doing something. And we're not going to eat till that happens. And then in the distance, as we pick up the rest of our scripture, he, they're going to see some people coming over the hill. A crowd of people. Now, food has been an issue a bunch of times in the Bible for the disciples. 4,000 people, 5,000 people. And they see a crowd and they start looking and those 4,000, 5,000, they haven't met yet. So they see this crowd coming. They're probably looking at their food going, oh my goodness. We're never going to eat. Because those people are probably going to take our food. Verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me that all that I ever did. See, there's something inside of each one of us that wants to know that God really knows me. Because if God really knows me, then all of this is true. If God really knows me, then God will do something in my life. So here they come. We want to know. We want God, right? Because they're being pushed out by the Jews. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked to stay with them. 
And he's, he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is indeed the savior of the world. Man, the rest of this story is so interesting. There's so much packed in here that you could that we could take and digest and, and tear up. But I want to I want to highlight a few things. First, the disciples, you know, they're shocked that he's talking with a Samaritan woman. They already were doubting about Samaria, but now here it is. They're shocked that he's 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 talking with this woman, which confirms to us just how their culture was. They, we're not assuming this anymore that they're thinking that the that the Samaritans are half-breeds and that they're not worthy of, of God and, and all of that. We know that now. Because they're questioning Jesus. They're questioning their minds. They're not even bold enough to ask him. Why is he talking to that woman? She's one of those. She's one of those people. They started doing this, and we do it too. They judged outward appearances rather than seeing the value of God's creation on the inside. Disciple, remember, the disciples just arrived from buying food. They are hungry. They assume Jesus is hungry also. This is their issue, too. It can become very easy to see things through our natural eyes and miss what God is doing spiritually. Jesus tells the disciples his nourishment comes from doing the will of God. A question to you. A lot of times we call the will of God ministry. That's the Christianese term for the will of God. Ministry. My ministry, your ministry, their ministry. My question to you is, is ministry a job? Well, let me tell you a story. Teen Challenge, um, man, the, the average life expectancy of a men's program worker there was two years. Two. I, I was there six. Um, God revealed something to me very early on. I'm not trying to toot a horn and say, oh, look at me. That's not that. But God revealed something to me very early on that, that stuck with me. And I thank God that it was like in year one that this happened because it probably gave me the strength to make it through. But I remember sat, sitting in Pastor Sal's office, and we had just came out of a staff meeting talking about all the things that we were going to do. Um, all the different fundraisers we had to do for that week, uh, the different churches we would go to all over the state. And uh, I was sitting in his office, and I was tired. To be honest, there's 15 guys living in a house. And at that time, it was just kind of me. I had an intern that really didn't like me because he thought he was supposed to be at my job. But whatever. And I'm sitting there, and I'm tired. And I know Pastor Sal sees this on me. And he says, Ryan, is this a job to you? I don't know. I've been there probably about a year. Probably about a year. And, you know, sometimes God just uses our honesty to reveal to us what he's doing. And I looked at him, I said, Pastor Sal, if this was a job, I would have quit a long time ago. You don't pay me enough. I'd make a hundred bucks a week. hundred bucks a week. You don't pay me enough. So it's not a job. And I remember seeing the relief in his eyes. Psalms 48 says this. It says, I desire, David, I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. <clears throat> Jesus viewed ministry as a delight. It wasn't a task. Doing the will of God wasn't a task. But when we read scriptures that talk about doing the will of God, we, we're task-orientated people. And we turn that into a job. And at any time that serving God and walking out his will for your life becomes a job, you will go the other way every time. You might last for a day or two, but it's not going to last the whole time. It's not going to have longevity. Jesus talks about the harvest. He talks about what the dis disciples saw with their natural eyes of hunger and told them how to be spiritually nourished, what we often call being on fire. When you're spiritually nourished, we've seen this. Maybe it's happened in your life. It's happened in mine, and sometimes I look back and I wonder what happened. Where'd that fire go? I was, boom, I was just, I, I didn't say no to, to anything God asked of me. And then all of a sudden, I didn't want to say yes to nothing. But when we're spiritually nourished, when we're, when we're refreshed, and then we start to do the will of God, we begin to become on fire. 
That would be the rekindling for me. That, okay, you accept Jesus, you're refreshed, you have this new life, and now you're allowing God to, to feed you and nourish you and cultivate you. Now your spirit's being rekindled. You tracking with me a little bit? So how does this relate, this rekindling? Talking about being on fire for God is we do the will of God. That's our nourishment, our spiritual food. That's what Jesus said. I have food that you do not have. And then he told them what that food was, was doing the will of God. And as he, he ate that will of God, his spirits rekindled. And he's, I mean, he's Jesus. We get that. But then you'll see that later on in the, in the disciples' lives too, Peter. But when Peter starts doing the will of God and not denying him anymore, 3,000 people are at it. People are, people are listening. People are coming to Jesus over it. People are following. He's nourished. He's doing the will of God. So how does this relate? See, I, I tend to think that I can often, I know I'm, man, time just got away today. I apologize to y'all. I often can relate to the dis- disciples. Why do I say that? Why? Because I do some of the same things they did. Why? Because I say stupid things sometimes. I do stupid things sometimes. I think I know it, and I don't. I can relate to the disciples because I need revelation just like they needed revelation. I need God to show me things. I need God to speak to me. I need God to correct and teach me. So here's the deal. There's no equation to be refreshed or rekindled. I gave you some, some things you need to deal with. It's not really an equation. Just you got to deal with it. You got to choose. You got to be, you got to accept what God's asking of you and you have to be honest. That's step one of being refreshed. Step two is taking action with what God's given you. That's being rekindled. As we take action, sharing with others what Jesus is doing in and through our lives and sharing with others what God is doing in the church, not just our church, but in the church globally. That's being rekindled. We start to share. We start to walk out our faith, right? We're taking action. Not only is it something I believe because I read it, I heard it, but I'm going to start walking that out. I'm going to test this thing. And I promise you, If you start walking out your faith, if you start telling people your story, you'll be rekindled because good will come from that. People will come to Jesus, I promise you that. The the enemy would like to lie to you and tell you different, but it's just not true. When we share our testimony, it has power. And people say, man, listen to those Samaritans. We believed at what you told us, but now we've met him. And we don't need your testimony anymore. We're following him, right? That's our job. It's not our job. It's, it's, our, it's our gift, our opportunity to bless other folks. Amen? What would it look like if each one of us would accept what Jesus is offering us? I like visual aids, the refreshment. I'm closing out. What would it look like if we all accepted the refreshment that God offered us and then started doing his will, being nourished by him. What would that look like? I tell you what that looks like. It looks like spiritual growth. That looks like people coming to Jesus. That looks like a person that's on fire. You know what that really looks like? We talked about it in the disciple series. It looks like bold evangelism. I want to pray with you this morning, and uh, man, if you want, if you have special prayer, I'll be here after I'm done praying. If you need to go, I get it. I went over. Um, But uh, I want to pray with all of us. This morning, I I really believe God wants to do a move in our lives, each of our lives. It's not just for one person in this room. Each of us, all of us need this. We all need refreshment. We all need rekindled. We all need nourishment pray. Dear God, I thank you for our body here this morning. I thank you that even what you spoke to us earlier about about how much you love us and that you see our tears, you see our pain, 
You see our discouragement, our depression. You see our joy. I thank you that you, you spoke into our lives. That we can trust you, that you love us, and that you're there for us, that you want to wipe away our tears, that you want to celebrate those joys, that you want to encourage us to move us out of depression, out of discouragement, and into your love and your peace and your joy. I thank you for that, Lord. I pray for us that we would take you at your word, that we would trust that that's who you are, that we would know beyond trusting, that we would know that's who you are, that that's just your nature. God, I pray for the folks in this room that need to, to accept that offer, whether it be salvation, whether it be a, to rededicate their lives to following you, uh, just to be refreshed, Lord. Maybe we've been doing it in our own strength too long, God. I pray that, that in this moment, in their heart, they would just say, Jesus, I need your refreshment. God, I pray that you would honor that cry right now. God, if, I pray for, for all of us, too, that we would start being spiritually rekindled, that we'd be spiritually nourished, that we'd start taking what, we, what you're doing in our lives and, and walking in your will, Lord, whether that be evangelizing, whether that just be serving privately, in the secret place. God, but I pray that we would do your will and we'd be nourished and we'd be rekindled and that, that St. Louis wouldn't even know what hit them, the force of you moving through, in and through us, Lord. God, I pray for our city here, Lord, that we would live our lives out in a way that would win souls and would be added to the kingdom of God. I pray for that, Lord. I pray that we would impact the, our nation and the globe, Lord. God, I pray for revelation that we'd be able to see what your will is for our lives. We'd be able to hear you speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, hey, I know God, God is on them. Can I get the robot going? God is on the move. I know God is on the move. He's on the move in my life. He's on the move in your life. God bless you. Have a great week.